Um, just to update, uh, you know, for the weekend, the players had the weekend off. Um, coaches uh, came in after the game, you know, did a nice job working on the self-scout the last couple days. Uh, that's a critical part, a critical piece uh, for us during this mini buy. And uh, really for us, it's about working on the uh, individual uh, first. You know, so we'll look at uh, each individual player and what they need to improve on. A couple of things, you know, in the run, a couple of things in the past, I think that's important to do. And then where we need to improve on, on the teams, special teams wise, and uh, the techniques and fundamentals involved there. Um, so we have a lot of improvement to do. Uh, we can uh, definitely see that over the first five games. And I think we are improving. Uh, we, we got better at the fundamentals um, as we work through. I think the continuity and the structures got better um, as, as the season has progressed. And uh, we're starting to really see the fruits of that labor. So that's uh, an exciting piece for, for our football team. Um, you know, and then we look at scheme. You know, we look at the scheme uh, after the individual and how we can improve. You know, how we can improve situationally, um, you know, be it third down or in the red zone. Uh, be it in a two-minute, uh, you know, offense or defense. We look at all those with a critical eye, um, and then we sit down and uh, put a plan together to improve those things um, as we go through this week and also into the, these next five games. Uh, that's going to be very important um, for us. Um, you know, with uh, in terms of the injury updates, I really don't have anything uh, today uh, for you. Uh, we're waiting to see. I mean, we got a couple guys that are in, you know, concussion protocol, and a couple guys that are. That are banged up a little bit. We got some guys that are we thinking are are going to come back, but again, I'll have more answers on Wednesday uh, relative to, to any injury updates. Um, relative to the uh, you know the position on defense that we're looking at right now, and that position really for me is is more of an analyst, more of a senior uh, defensive analyst uh, that would uh, do advanced work um, for us uh, for the up, upcoming opponent. Um, what would give us you know. Uh, certainly ideas and, and things how to attack um, that, that upcoming opponent and just to get another set of eyes uh, for advancing uh, for us in that. And again, I don't have names. I don't have a timetable for that right now at this time, uh, but that will be coming shortly. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, adding um, that if, if we choose to do that. So uh, that's looking uh, where it is right now. And uh, with that, I'll open up to questions. Would you be looking for somebody experienced, someone that you've, someone you've worked with before that could take some of the defensive coordinator responsibilities off your plate? Um, really, just uh, you know, looking at a few guys, you know, and I think it's important to uh, get the right guy. Uh, but certainly, experience helps um, when you when you're looking at that position. Um, certainly, somebody that's been in the league, you know, a while or has been in the league. So I think it's important that way. But also knows, you know, has relative and knows your defense a little bit too. So I think that's good. Um, but again, we're in ongoing in the process of that, and uh, hopefully we'll get that uh, going here shortly. Would that, analyst be, what do you, would that analyst be in the building? What's that? Would they be based in the building, or would they do that? Uh, we're still working through that. We're still working through that. That's definitely a possibility in the building, re working partly remotely, so we can we can do uh, either one. What would you imagine that doing for you? Theoretically, if you brought in somebody in that role. What would that? I understand it would help overall, but how would it help you specifically with your responsibilities and the way you manage your time? Yeah, it would just be more of a, a, a head start, you know, a jump on a head start in terms of the advancement. Um, so he would be uh, that person would be ahead on the next opponent, you know. So working in advance, a whole week in advance, uh, so that would be uh, beneficial for us uh, early in the week. Can you Do you want getting uh, Eddie and Jalen back? Yeah, like again, uh, in injuries. We'll know more on Wednesday. Uh, you know, again, we don't have the clarification of that right now. Uh, everything is looking good. You know, with some of those guys, but uh, certainly we'll see where it goes. When you look at the Vikings and Jefferson, you obviously gets a hamstring yesterday. Do you just have to prepare as, as though he's going to play? How do you monitor those things? From yeah, exactly right. You have to prepare as if he's going to play. Um, you always got to be ready for that because obviously the. You know, one of the most dynamic receivers in the league, so you always got to prepare for that. What jumped out at you about him last year when you played him? Um, just his uh, his power and his he's just fluid. You know how they keep him on the move and they do a really good job with him. Um, he's strong through the catch point. Um, just a very dynamic player. You know, one of the best in the league at that position. And have you calls for a defensive analyst as you call guys? Did you get positive feedback? Like people were interested, and now the decision's more on your side, or do you think the decision's more on their side? Yeah, uh, very positive. Yeah, uh, very positive feedback. Um, you know, 
and there was you know great conversations. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's all been positive. Jermont had spoken? probably his Jermont had probably his best game yep. so far in Washington. What was different about what he did against the Commanders compared to the first four games? Yeah, I, I think he's just getting more comfortable, more consistent. Uh, you could see his takeoff was better. Um, I think that he was throwing his fastball at, rather than trying to, you know, sometimes he has a tendency to read and other just, you know, get off and go. Um, so I just think he just is more consistent and he's, he's feeling that, you know, and you saw him do, you know, I know one of the pressures was on a screen, but still he had to, you know, still had to take off and, and did a nice job, you know, hitting the quarterback. And, and that's what we need. We need more hits on the quarterback. Now, Ron Marinelli is obviously a guy you've worked with in the past, have a close relationship with it. Did you reach out to him about this position or is he firmly in retirement? Yeah, he's he's uh, very comfortable uh, in retirement. You know, so he was out and uh, he's out in Vegas right now. So uh, he's, uh, yeah, we talk weekly, though, for sure. Man, with, with, when you're talking about the, the self-scouting, with Justin specifically, how do you balance the first three weeks and the last two? Obviously, the first three happened. So, I mean, how do you kind of weigh that in terms of figuring out what's next for him? Yeah, it really just looking when you when you look at the the growth that he's had, you know, over the year uh, this year, um, it's it's been really good, you know, and, and where he's the steps he's taken the last couple of weeks has been has been where where uh, we all want it to go, and he's he's done that, and uh, we just got to keep building upon that. You know, it's just to be in the consistent, you know, performer um, that he is. Um, he's always going to work hard in practice. He's always going to work his tail off to get that done. But, you know, putting himself in position, us as coaches, putting him in position to succeed um, is is paramount. You know, and he's done a good job with that the last last couple of weeks. We just got to keep building upon that and, uh, you know, being able to distribute the ball, you know, to different skill you know, on our offense is, is going to be paramount going forward. You guys have been banged up all across the defensive backfield, but – to get Kyler back, you've talked for a year and a half now how important that is. So what you guys want to do? What would it mean to have him ready? Yeah, and again, my hats off. You know, you know, uh, Greg was in here before Strowman. You know, stepping in there and doing what he did for the games he was in there. Um, you know, and that performance he had on Thursday night was just uh, was really outstanding uh, by him. So I just want to tip my hat to him. Uh, but uh, Kyler, you know, is a damn. He's a good player, really good player, dynamic player in there at nickel. Uh, does a lot of things for us. You know, that, that position, you know, if if done right, enables us to play um, various coverages, um, able to you know to pressure him, you know, pressure player, and do a lot of different things with him. And uh, he's uh, was on his way. He had a great camp. We were really excited about him starting the year, and then he got hurt the first game. And you know, so we've been uh, you know trying to put people in there. You know, we've had uh, Sanborn in there a little bit. You know, we've had Stroman in there. Had different guys in there, but. Uh, um, it's going to be really good to get him back, so we can be be more consistent with our with our uh, defensive alignment. And Matt, given that your your philosophy, your defensive philosophy is based on getting pressure with four, and you guys have had trouble doing that, how do you how much have you adapted from these beliefs and these uh, these strategies that you've crafted for thirty years? How much have you adapted this season to a different reality and forcing yourself to kind of think outside the box and get creative? Yeah, I mean, I th really, it's uh, it's all about you know the pressure, right? You know, so we have to get creative, uh, certain ways of doing that, where it's you know sending different pressure players. I think is important, as you saw the other night, uh, we did some of that. But uh, you know, again, it's got to be it's got to be done with uh, the right kind of guys too. You know, you know, the pressure player, the pressure player that's coming matters. You know, and that could be the front four, but it could be somebody from the second level. Um, but uh, again, you got to adapt, you got to adjust a little bit, and uh, we'll see where that goes from here. I think that pressure rate was the highest it's been, or the blitz rate's the highest it's been since you got here last year. And I'm curious, what's the last time you blitzed as much as a defensive coordinator? Did you ever do that in Indianapolis, or do we yeah. have to go back to Missouri? No, uh, we did it. We did it there for sure. Uh, there's a there's a couple games where it was an uptick, and again, it's it's all based on the team, right? It's all based on the team and where you, where you're at with your football team. So, you know, pressure is paramount, and we're gonna have to continue to do that um, either with four or five or six guys. And I think that's important to be able to do that. And with our secondary coming back, we'll able to, we'll we'll be able to be more flexible with that. You know, in terms of pressure and what types of pressure we have. Matt, when you went back and watched the film, what did you make of Tevin's debut? And do you envision that platoon and left guard kind of ending now that he's kind of got Yeah, we'll see where it goes. We, we liked uh, Tevin in there. You know, Tevin did a really nice job um, in there coming back. I think he had 37 plays, I want to say. Uh, but uh, he performed well, you know, and I thought he was, you know, 
course, you got to knock a little rust off. There was certainly that part of it, but uh, he did a really good job in there, and uh, you know, certainly a good player, you know, in there. He gives us a lot of a lot of size in there and a lot of lean mass, you know, to hold the pocket firm inside there. And again, the offensive line uh, the other night did a remarkable job of, of doing that, given just in the time. You know, even when there were just the five guys in there without any chip help, they did a really good job of protecting uh, throughout the whole course of the night. When you look at potential defensive coaches to add or, or analyst, uh, whatever you want to call it, are you inclined to find someone that is very closely aligned with your defensive philosophy, or would you see a benefit to bringing in somebody that thinks differently than you and maybe add something to the equation? No, I think that's. Uh, I think it's both. I think you try to find a guy that has both. You know, because he has to have some. You know, you know similarities. You know, because he knows the scheme, but also has uh, has different experiences to uh, think outside the box, uh, which brings new, fresh perspective in. So I think that's uh, oh, both things are always good. Did you have a senior defensive analyst when you were in Indianapolis? What's that? Did you have a senior defensive analyst when you? Were I did not. I did not. But I, I did have a guy that was helping me advance, so um, which was which was a good thing. Deontay Foreman was uh, kind of pushed out of the mix early this season. Who was? Deontay Foreman was pushed out of the mix early this season. If, if you need him because of injuries, what do you need to see from him? Um, just, you know, him being him. You know, he's a, he's a really good downhill runner. Um, you know, he's got he's a physical player. And uh, just, just that, you know, just what we saw last year on tape. And we just want to see just that, that during practice and then that during the games and, and being consistent. Matt, when you guys went back and last scouted one. the schemes, when you looked at the first three weeks on offense compared to the last two, what what led to the the change? Um, I just think that uh, we were we were aggressive. Um, I really do. Um, I think that uh, you know Justin's more comfortable, and I think that we're just getting you know used to the continuity and the consistency of playing uh, you know uh, with and next to each other. And I think that's just really it. Thank you.